Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this New Year's Day matchup. It's the Cardinals and the Steelers coming up next. But not far from where the Steelers' former homes at Three Rivers Stadium, Forbes Field once stood, we are at Pittsburgh's Accrature Stadium. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white lines. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yeah, it's a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the thank you for the notice. to get this one started and we are underway from Pittsburgh and we will not get a run back here to start it's a touchback and it will come out to the 25 so out come the Steelers now for their first drive they're led out by the second year pro out of Pitt looking for a big jump in year two Kenny Pickett and when you watch Kenny Pickett play you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign. Took his game to a new level and made him a first round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. And his first pass here is gonna fall incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw, pick it. That's to the sideline and incomplete. So two incompletions have led him to an early third and ten. Pick it'll look to throw it here. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. Fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. Greg George, deep for Arizona. Fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. The Cardinals now getting set to go offensively, and it'll be the dual threat quarterback, Kyler Murray, leading the way. And when you have a guy like Kyler Murray under center, it not only opens up your playbook, it allows you to draw up even more plays because he's among the best dual threat quarterbacks in the league and a true playmaker. If flushed out of the pocket, he might even be more dangerous. The next step for him, being able to throw on rhythm and deliver from the pocket. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 right at the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He'll dump this one off to Connor. Two yards on the pickup there, and that'll make it second down. Yeah. 
A man who played both collegiately and professionally on this field. A welcome back for James Conner. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Third down and six. To throw is Murray. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. First and ten is counter. And he's got some space here. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look, five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes, you can run the football effectively against that defense. Meanwhile, Murray's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. From the gun, Murray. And this is caught. It's Brown. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Surgeon at work. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Again, it'll be counter. And he will get into the end zone. Touchdown. Minnesota. James Conner, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals are on the board first here this afternoon. So that a great sequence for these guys to begin the ball game. They force the punt on one end, then come right down the field and score on the other. And that's a great example of leaning on each other and building a little momentum that way. How about the defense forcing the punt? Turns it over to the offense with confidence, and they take it downfield and score. Prater for the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was a touchdown run by James Conner that was the exclamation mark. the touchdown out is Prater to kick and he won't return this one he'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25 so Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession and the last drive their first drive three and out what changes here if anything I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. On first and 10, Rudolph. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. 
So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Here's Rudolph. And he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line. It's a sack. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second and a country mile. A first carry for Najee Harris. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. That'll net seven yards on the ground, but will leave him with a healthy distance still to go on third down. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get on track in this one. Here's Presley Harvin now. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Now a fair catch signaled for and made right about the 43-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Cards will take over first and 10. So good field position for the Cardinals as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. The drive will start with Connor. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Overall, I'd have to say that was just really good team defense because, to me, you can't pin that one on the running back. He had no shot there. He had a man in his face immediately. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Now Murray. Throw left side complete. That's Connor. Touchdown, Cardinals! James Connor. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Cardinals are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two, two touchdowns. Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Extra point good by Prater, and it's now 14 to nothing. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. On the return from his end zone, Godwin Igwebuke. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Play action. It's Rudolph. Looking left sideline incomplete. I wouldn't be shocked at all right now if there's a look of surprise on the big fella's face because he had the route that he wanted, running the corner, 
and usually he's able to use his body and catch the football, but a really nice play by the defenders, able to knock it away. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now it's Rudolph. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Well, after incompletions on first and second down, it certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Rudolph. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection, maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you're wondering, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way too when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. Now run straight ahead with Warren. Shrugs him off. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Rudolph's throw pulled in by Robinson here. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still first down. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Rudolph looking to throw. Robinson's got it. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Now a second and two. Here's Rudolph. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. But well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. He had to fight for every yard on that run, shook himself free of a tackle, and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on it. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. Second down and four. Here's Rudolph off play action. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Multiple defenders getting home there for a loss of 11. Well, partners, the first quarter too early to start talking about needing a comeback. They're down two touchdowns already, and that sack, that disrupts this drive. They need something to go right on offense, and they need it to happen soon. And the Cardinals, they trot out their dime package for third down. Rudolph now to throw. 
This to the sideline and incomplete. Nearly intercepted, in fact, but he couldn't hang on. Fourth down. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? On oh, is Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. And the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball, so they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. Yeah, they're almost pushing them to the brink, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers, but you're just now supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Offense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Here's Murray back near his goal line. And that went to the right side and incomplete. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Murray a give. This is Connor. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought up a punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys will get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Here comes the Cardinals punter now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. He spins free. It's a net of 40 there, a punt of 48, and a return of eight. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've been outplayed early, no question, down 14-0 already, as they come up first and 10. Back to throw, Rudolph. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 14 yards that time for number 14. That's good for a Pittsburgh Steeler. First and 10 at the 38 yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Rudolph. throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's second and ten. A handoff for Warren. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Third and five. Rudolph looking to throw it. Over the middle complete. It's Harris, and he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they've got it with fourth down and one.
They run for it with Harris. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Now we're going to get a stoppage here as we've got an injured Cardinal on the field. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. A short one there to Fryermuth. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. A few moving pieces on that play because that was an RPO, was it not? It was, but one important piece that didn't move incorrectly, the offensive line. Because when you're running this play, as he continued down the line of scrimmage, sometimes the lineman can wander downfield. And if you're more than a yard downfield, it's illegal to throw the football at that point. But they held their ground, held their spot turn it into a nice game and he's dropped just before the line to gain four yard pickup leaves him with third and one and the Steelers on third down they've converted just two for six thus far they're up against a third and one situation on the give it's Warren Steelers have got it back to within a score. Well, they were looking to pick up the first down on third and short. They got a little more than they bargained for, finding the end zone as well. And oftentimes in short yardage situations, you get a lot of defenders stacked near the line of scrimmage partner. So if you can get past that first wave, there's usually room to roll, and he found it. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that'll make our score 14 to 7. returning and he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25 yard line here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance they couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost Charles we'll see if they can get a better more sustained drive going here yeah and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing when you start a drive from that deep in your own territory the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then you change the field position right you flip the field a little bit they didn't get that done this time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out and yeah, that's good for a gain of six and it'll be second down and a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way and really we shouldn't be surprised should we that's what runners do especially the best ones they break tackles and gain extra yardage They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. A short one here caught by McBride. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? On first and ten, here's Murray. Goes right back to McBride. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Murray now to throw. Quick slant to Brown. 
third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. They run behind center with Connor, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down and six now. Here's Murray. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Here's Murray. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there him to force that to the ground and fourth down now coming up from a defensive perspective they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football there was pressure on the quarterback they were getting after him and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion now on fourth down on is the punt team sending this one away this one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin quarter and they're going to mark this out of the five yard line and Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn it into a play action, and throw one deep. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Here now, second and four. Back to throw, pick it. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lop one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch is taken here a step or two inside the 45-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and they will take over first and 10. Here's James Conner now as he trots back onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Murray's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you can just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Murray now on first down. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, so many times defensive backs get caught playing the man rather than the football. 
but not in this case. That's an excellent play. Did exactly what you're supposed to do. Attack the football and help break up the pass. And, yep, as a result, knocks it down. On second down, Connor looking for space. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. 48 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. The Cardinals on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. They'll try and run for it with Connor. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Nine yards that time. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Again, it's Connor. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. We'll go down as a gain of six, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. To throw is Murray. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Pretty good location there on that throw. It really was, wasn't it? That was likely one where the receiver was either going to catch it or no one. Really good decision. And boy, what a catch and move right there. And a tough spot to get it over the middle. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Kyler Murray, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals go up by two touchdowns. Touchdowns on their first three possessions, and they're a PAT from going up 21 to 7. Yeah, very impressive the way that they've moved the football. Full command of their playbook, full command of the way they wanted to attack. Crater on and the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. So that drive in total eight plays. And the play that polished it off was the touchdown run by Kyler Murray. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Steeler offense set to regain possession. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And he'll get this to the 32. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. From the gun, here's Pickett. A short one there to Firebuth. That'll go for a gain of seven. And now one yard to go on third down. Yeah. 
So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Pick it on third and one. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. Short yardage situation, you have to wonder if they thought that they were just going to run it inside. But you have to be cognizant of the back slipping out of the backfield trying to find some open space. And that's exactly what he does to the tune of a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Second and 10. Dialing up another pass here. Pick it. A short one there to Fryermuth. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. <laughs> Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. It's always a goal and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. They've had a very solid first half, and as we near the end of that first half, they're just looking for a little more on top of their lead right now. And when you put together a game plan on offense, you put together what you think is going to be the best possible scenario, right? Hey, we're going to score. These are the plays that are going to do it. But you also put together your counters, meaning after they make adjustments to what you're doing, what do we have to go to next? The adjustment to the adjustment. Exactly. So I can't wait to see if we come out of the half, how they're going to go about doing things. Do you just keep running what you ran before? Or do you go to your counters expecting those adjustments to happen? Before that, we'll see the end here this first half. Murray to Moore for the Cardinal first. They'll look to throw. A short one here caught by McBride. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 12 yards to pick up. Good enough for an Arizona first. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. First down, Murray. That's complete to McBride. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Now Murray again. And this is caught. It's Brown. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 36. Give them 18 on the play. First down, Arizona. So from the 36 now, first and 10. to throw, it's Murray. This will be caught once again by Brown. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight yard line. That's good for 28 yards. 
And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. Again, they'll throw with Murray. Screen pass to Connor. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. On second down, here's Murray. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Uh, great coverage down in the end zone. He's scanning the field, looking, looking. No one ever came open. So in the end, he makes the best decision and just fires it over the end line. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Prater's kick is good, and they will open things up a bit more. It's 24 to 7. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two for one special to finish things off. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We watched the veteran James Conner put together a very solid first half. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game, as he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Cards with a lead, and they will get this football first as the second half gets started. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble of bringing it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. The Cardinals ready to go here to start the third quarter. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 27. He'll start the drive with a give to Connor. He'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Murray going to throw. A short one here caught by McBride. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Murray now, buying time to his left. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. 
Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt it for a second. They pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. Murray now on first down. Toward the sideline, intercepted. Picked off by Joey Porter Jr. And the Steelers are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. But pretty much everything went their way offensively in the first half, but now an interception on the opening drive of the third quarter. As we know, the key to everything here, don't get careless with the football. The problem is you've got to stay aggressive as well. So where's the line between being aggressive and attacking and being overly aggressive? I think they just crossed it on that one. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs right at the 30. Harris will start to drive out, and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Another modest gain there on that one, and I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner, because... They have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Pick it a look to throw it here. That is caught. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. They only needed one yard on third down. They get 10 instead by going to the air. And you start to think if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that will help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. From the 47 now, they'll work with a second and seven. Pick it. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 27 yards there, a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Pick it to throw on first down. That's complete to his tight end, Fryermuth. And they'll get this down to the 10. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions, first and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting, pick a play you think they would run here, and just load up for it and see what happens. Pick it, gonna bootleg it. Flush to his right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's gonna be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble, hit second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line after a pickup of about three. Well, you'd have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one. But I don't think they're built like that. 
Again, it's Harris. And this time, he is in. Touchdown, Steelers. And how nice is it to have a guy like Najee Harris in the backfield when you get down near the goal line? He can use his 230-plus pound frame to just get you those tough yards, and he finishes things off here with a touchdown run. Boswell for the extra point. It's up and good, so they claw back into it. 24-14 now. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with the touchdown run. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually, the 26 officially. So a net gain of one there. The Cardinal offense here ready to take over. This now a 10 point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 26. It's Connor as they stay on the ground and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. Second down, eight to go from the 28. They'll fake it to Connor. Now Murray. He's got a man on the crossing route. That's Moore. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. That's another beautiful throw right there. It gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. On play action, it's Murray. Caught by Wilson. And he's taken down inside the 30. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. First down. On first and ten, here's Murray. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. Kyler Murray, 28 yards. And the Cardinals are able to extend their lead. And maybe the defense got so caught up in him throwing the football, they forgot he can take off, too. And you often hear about the quarterback being the unaccounted for guy as a runner. Well, even on a passing play, he's unaccounted for as a runner, and he turned it into a nice game. A very nice run, and it turns in to six points. Prater for the extra point, and that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here. 
And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And now out come the Steelers. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. First and 10, here's Pickett. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Now a second and ten. Now pick it. A short one there to Firemuth. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. A two-yard pickup makes it third and eight. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Steps away to his left. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. On the run, it's Warren. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. He's down the line. Four yards on the big up. Second and six. Ball on the 40 now. Here's the second down and six. Looking to throw. Pick it. He's got his tight end Fryer Muth right side. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 41-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. It's so important to tackle well against these guys, but you and I both know that's easier said than done when the guy you're trying to tackle looks like this guy. And it's usually going to take more than one man to get him down, and it did right there. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 41. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. To the air on first down with Pickett. That's going to be caught by Pickens. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. Pickett sets up play action. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long. And you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Here's Pickett. knocked away and incomplete. Now they're staring at a fourth down as Arizona's defense does its job. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Boswell's kick is good, and that will close the gap down to 14. 
So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The football going back over to Arizona now. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive. As they, they score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? T.J. Watt in on the tackle. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so they can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. Able to get this one to McBride. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Here's third and three. Here's Murray. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Couple of Oklahoma teammates there. Murray to Brown for a Cardinal first. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Cardinal football. They're also out in front of the scoreboard as we get set for the fourth. First down, Murray. This will be caught once again by Brown. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. This second and four. Throwing again, Murray. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. Trey McBride, the target on that throw. And it's third and four. From the gun, Murray. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That's a gain of nearly 40 yards on third and medium to pick up the first. And this is seemingly how it's been all game long. This defense has been just a step too slow. And here they're burned again. Another big play. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll run here with Connor. Shoves him aside. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. It's largely been the air attack that's gotten them down here, but now's where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Once again, it's Connor. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. 
James Conner taking it in from four yards out. And the Cardinals have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. You're in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line, and here they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. Extra point good by Prater, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Steelers ready for their next possession. We said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, so a lot of credit to the defensive game plan and especially the execution. Pickett throwing again on second down. Complete, it's Johnson. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The picket fighting Johnson there. First down, Steelers. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Good call there on first down. And Brandon, I'm getting better over the years and not screaming out, screen, screen, screen with my defensive training. They want to keep those pass rushers honest. And they did so there, and they wind up picking up positive yardage. Here's Warren. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Uh, defensively, with this lead in the fourth quarter, I guess you can allow a run of that magnitude. You're right about that, but really the focus has got to be don't fall in love with the idea that you're getting big runs now. You're right. They're actually being allowed. They've got to think really hard about getting some chunk plays through the air, too. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Here's Pickett on second down. He finds Pickens over the middle. Five yards, now it's third and five. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch. But you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Pick it back to throw. And he is caught. And he will have a Steelers first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. For many people, that's not your standard play call in that third down situation. But for so many offenses, they just want the ball in the hands of their playmakers in open space. And after he caught it, he did a nice job picking up the first down. Pick it right back to the air again. Finds Pickens out right. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mouse trap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Here's Fryer Muth again. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. Was that a design pass or what was that? It was built into the play call. He had the opportunity to either hand it inside, keep it himself to run it, or do what he just did. Throw that pass inside, hitting a receiver on the run. On first and 10, it's Pickett. It quickly into the hands of Robinson. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. It doesn't matter where on the field he is. Even down here in the red zone, he is still slippery with the ball in his hands. And he was almost able to work his way into the end zone. Instead, they'll have to settle for first and goal, but they'll take it. Pick it. He's going to throw it again. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Pickett looking to throw on second down. And that ball is caught by Washington. Touchdown, Steelers. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Steelers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Extra point now by Boswell. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And Greg Dortch now to return it. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. James Conner and the Cardinal offense ready to get back to work. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. The tackle made by Alandon Roberts. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Second down and eight. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 86 yards rushing now for Connor and a first down. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. Murray again, this is Connor. 
And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. And now Murray's going to set up to throw. And this will be swung out here for Connor. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. A give running right is counter. And maybe a little over-pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of 11 and a Cardinal first down. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. The stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. Right back to Connor here on first. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. Connor up the middle. And the Cardinals are going to have a first down. And that's a big one. As they should be able to run it out from here. Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. Connor is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Now Prater to add the PAT. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was a touchdown run by James Conner that was the exclamation mark.
And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And the stiff arm made it a pretty little run, not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Pickett. Completes this one to Pickens. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And now they're in the hurry up. Pick it now on first down. He's going to let it fly. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. And this is a situation where as a head coach, you're just saying, what else could go wrong? Let's get it all out of our system, please. This has been a sloppy game throughout. The execution has been lacking. A lot of mistakes, both mental and physical. And here's a big play that goes by the wayside. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. One final shot for Pickett. Pressure comes and the Cardinals bring him down. A higher scoring game, Charles.